Have you ever wanted to be the first to know if aliens really exist? Well, with Nebula, you can be! Nebula is the streaming service that's home to its Probably Not Aliens, as well as our YouTube channels. And the best part? All of our content goes up early on Nebula. So when we break first contact with E.T., you'll be the first to find out. That's right, you'll be able to listen to the next episode of this show before anyone else. Plus, we post bonus content that you won't find any other place. And the best part? By signing up for Nebula at nebula.tv slash probably not aliens, you're directly supporting the show and both of us. So don't wait any longer. Join Nebula today and be the first to know if this time it really is aliens. talking about Nazi search for ancient artifacts. That's like an Indiana Jones. It is like an Indiana Jones. And in, in fact, it is exactly the inspiration for an Indiana Jones. Well, you know, Tristan, as I turn, I'm going to turn my chair around like a youth pastor. I know someone who's like the real life Indiana Jones. At least people say that about him. Or at least he says that people say that about him. He says that people say that about him. I don't think we're actually going to be talking about David Childress today, though. Yeah, this is a Childress free. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. I, I, what's it called? We should make a podcast that is like, like we don't have a subreddit yet, but I feel no. like a very funny name for our subreddit would be our children's free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not child free. Children's free. <laughs> Uh, just as like a, a goof, although I will say I deeply, deeply hate our child free. It is it is a pod, yeah. it is a subreddit full of just the most horrible human beings. Wow. It's just like it's it's a subreddit of people who get each other mad about the concept of children existing, like just the concept of them. Yeah. Like if I were to like as a parent of a toddler, uh, which is the worst way to start any sentence, but um. <laughs> But, uh-huh. but like child f- to 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 live my life in accordance with what would make child free happy, I would right. basically need to when you have a child, you go into your house and you are not allowed to emerge until that child is at least like 15, 16 years old. OK, because uh, still technically a child, but yeah, but they just like they get angry at the concept like the, the, it's child free is the only place on the Internet where you'll go to have people complaining that they saw kids at Disneyland. Like, you know, like that kind of that kind of mentality. Right. Okay. All right. And like, yeah, like I get it. I get that. Like there's been like a long history of people being shitty towards people for not wanting to have kids. Like I get that. And also that, you know, late stage capitalism has resulted in a lot of people not being able to have kids and that, you know, making peace with that might be about like building an identity around that concept. But it seems like it has just mutated into, I hate the concept that there are people that are small that are like, like I hate children Mm -hmm. and like, I hate, I hate young people. I yeah, hate, I hate humans who aren't. Why can't they just a, learn to be adults like grown me? adults? And the thing is that, like, yeah, it's it's and in my mind, I'm just like, you know, that like children are yeah. still people like they are mm. human beings Interesting. that are entitled to that. the 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 sort of considerations that all humans are entitled to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, yeah. And so I'm always just like, I hate I don't know. It's it, it's 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 a subreddit that I cannot think about without having like a little twinge of rage. <laughs> but children's free makes me but very children's happy. Free R slash Childress Free is a utopia where we don't talk about David Childress, one of the main people on Ancient Aliens, who uh, some people might say is kind of like the real life Indiana Jones when you think about it. And this is a, this is a safe space. No Childress is allowed. Children are allowed if they want to be, if their parents are cool enough. Yeah. Yeah. This podcast with its explicit tag, very much for kids. Does your child listen to the podcast that we do? Um, I'm, I'm sure it has played in a room while he has been around. Whether or not he paid attention to it is okay. is, is either way, Um, which okay. is a thing I should be more aware of because he's sort of turning that corner into like being a person you can have conversations with. Mm. as he's like now two and is sort of we're getting more into him doing more person stuff gotcha like i have you should play just the first like 20 minutes of a podcast where it's just us 
talking and then we get to like the claim of ancient aliens and then we cut off so he never never listens to any of the debunking part he's just oh like boy. yeah my dad talks with his friend and they have a lot of fun and then they talk about how uh nazis were aliens or something like that yeah that's my dad i always like have this thought that like and this is like a terrible thought but i always think of like if uh if anything were to ever happen to me and like i am a a former person and <laughs> And then yeah. like 20 years from now, my 22 year old son is like, I want to learn more about what my dad was like, because I never got to know him growing up. And then he finds like, just like the hours of content of me talking about the darkest shit on the internet. And then this podcast <laughs> where we talk about aliens and stuff. And like, that's the, that's like the main thing he has to get to know me by. And I'm like, my dad was really weird. <laughs> my dad's my hero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause I, cause you know, when, when, when somebody dies young or at least like, you know, sure. like dies in like like uh is an, supposed to be an important person in your life you kind of build a narrative around them yeah that's based on them not being a character that like a living person in your life and but if like the thing you have to go off if instead of like you know those like grainy home videos like in like a tv show or something like that where it's like my whole thing i have is like these home videos of my dad and instead it's going to be like i have hundreds of hours of him bitching about the internet far right and stuff like that you know yeah well at least it, that's it could be worse right it could it be, could be a much lot worse. worse yeah yeah it could be much worse. you could be like me and if i ever have kids they'll grow up to be like i wonder what dad was up to and it's just me talking about superheroes while having the worst hair imaginable <laughs> for like five years now that that makes me think maybe this is a story a personal a scott story uh-huh. uh we do know that if you were if you were to follow the nerd sync career for long enough there was a period where you had hair and then the period where you decided that bald was your was your thing yes I want to. I, I do. You have a story of the day that the day that transition happened when you have to, when you decided that you were like, I'm giving up on this. I'm done. No, just had bad hair. Just had bad hair. Always had bad hair. Didn't know how to style my hair. Was bad at hair. Didn't like it. Easier to not have it. But was there like a day when you snapped and you were like, ah? Or was it? Just I like- think there was a day when I had shaved sides, but I had l- like long hair in like the middle, and I sort of like had it droop over. Over to like one side and then someone who I respected online said that it sort of looked like an alt-right haircut and I was like all right no more hair you look like one of those guys who was walking around with uh, tiki torches that one time maybe maybe that doesn't look good on you and I'm like you're right you're correct no more hair for me beautiful okay so that's what we got all right <laughs> Was that was that was that a good enough for you? Was that a good story? Yeah, I think I think that I, I I there's an origin story now. There's an origin story. I didn't want to be at a tumultuous time in American history. I did not want to be confused with people who wanted basically everyone except white people dead. That I didn't want to be confused with that. So okay, yeah, because like my original thought was just that it was some sort of experiment gone wrong, and now it fuels your your desire to destroy Superman. So it, that was that came later, um, but that was part of it for sure. Brain over bronze or brain over brawn. That's that's your um, that's what you always go by. No, nah, brain and brawn. I'm big and strong. Don't let anyone tell you different. Um, this is a podcast about aliens. I think this is a podcast. <laughs> Speaking of Superman, this is a podcast about aliens, and I hate aliens. Grr, Are Superman. Alien free? Grr, this is this is childress free, Superman free, utopia built by me, Lex Luthor. It is I, Scott Nicewonder. I know nothing. I don't know anything. I ba- I come into this as c- fresh and clean as my newly shaven head. That's what I do. My name's Tristan Johnson, and instead I say Lex Luthor because I find that Ooh. when people insist on saying Luthor, it's much more fun. It is fun. It does make it more sound sa- sound more villainous. Lex Luthor, mm, Lex Luthor, mm, that's some gravitas there. And if they ever do an Elseworld where they do like Superman in like the fourteen or fifteen hundreds, you could just do uh, Martin Luthor King <laughs> or Martin. <laughs> Luthor, Martin Luthor. <laughs> yeah, just Martin Luthor. Yeah, bald Martin Luther King, who's uh, who's uh, what's it called? Who's angry about Superman? Uh, that's a different. That's a different uh, <laughs> Elseworld. 
<laughs> well, my name is Tristan Johnson. I am, I think that the best description I think I can, uh, that has come across in the show, I am the abyss that gazes back. Yep. I have, I have, the, I have the one who has, uh, who has gone off into the darkness and come back haggard, exhausted, scarred mentally and physically. But I come back with the forbidden knowledge that makes your life worse for having it. And now you're going to get some of that today. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. We continue our journey. Yeah. Into that the Nazis. Has stretched. Yeah. <laughs> it stretched way longer than we anticipated talking about ancient aliens and the third Reich talking about Nazis talking about world war two talking about all sorts of weird alien conspiracy theories from technology and mythological beliefs and all sorts of weird stuff. But what are we specifically talking about today? I know I teased it at the beginning, ancient artifacts. Yes. So what is this? Okay. So this is probably, if there was a Nazi conspiracy, like, like sci-fi adjacent conspiracy theory or fantasy, I guess in this one uh, that you know about, it's probably the idea that Nazis were scouring the world looking for ancient mythical artifacts of civilizations past. Ooh. Probably most famous would ooh, yeah. Ooh, there it is. So like the claim is that, you know, Hitler and the Nazis were into the occult, which we've already talked about multiple times, and that yeah. they were always looking for old artifacts from the past that people now associate with like the closest thing you can think of of today, like modern day D D magic items. Yes. Like these are things like the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail. Yep. But I also found out later that apparently Mjolnir was part of it, like Thor's hammer. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Norse mythology, I feel like ties in. Mm-hmm. And so so according to ancient aliens that they did these expeditions around the world to find things like the Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant because they thought that they would have powerful energies that they could use as weapons. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess like if you believe in like things like the Ark of the Covenant being a nuclear reactor, then if you can find it, then it's a source of power to win wars with or something. Yeah. If you can. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If they found Thor's hammer, could they even lift it, though? That is the problem. Could they even lift it. They found it. That was the curse. They found it. They actually did find it, Tristan. I'm going to oh, spoil okay. this episode right now. They found it. Couldn't pick it up. Damn. Lost the war. Yeah. Um. And I. I and my my first thought because I uh because I have Scott and we need to do the comic book connection. I always think about yeah. the opening scene. I think it is of Captain America where yes. they they bust into the ancient Norse temple and find the tesseract hidden somewhere. Yeah, hidden in a wall. Yeah, covered in the uh engraved in Idrisil the world tree from like Norse mythology. Yeah, exactly. So like this, and also the most iconic is Indiana Jones, where we've had several movies where the villains are Nazis that are seeking ancient artifacts to do powerful magic. Yeah. So again, this is along with like Nazis and the occult. This is an old, this is, this is a very like, you know, main, like well-known one that people have talked about multiple times. Do you think as David Childress has been described by others as the real life Indiana Jones, do you think he would punch Nazis the way that Indiana Jones would? I feel like David Childress is like the apolitical Indiana Jones of like, oh, ha- whoa, I'm not, I'm staying out of this one. I'm not gonna, you know, they believe what they believe. I'm not getting my hands dirty on this one, you know? Uh, defeat them in the battle of, of uh, in the, the... The marketplace of ideas or something like that? The marketplace of yeah. ideas. Yeah, defeat them in the marketplace of ideas. Don't use your fists like Indiana yeah instead Indiana Ford instead let's listen to what they have to say and then and then and then tear it down yeah like like the kind of like uh, Padme in that meme and then tear it down right and then tear it down Um, oh boy. I ever tell you that I'm doing like a Star Wars rewatch because the lore, like they've hit the sort of comic book thing where like, if you have to understand, to understand why, who yeah. Rosario Dawson is right now, you have to watch this show for th- like six year olds that came out in like the two thousands. And I'm like, mm. oh, okay. And I'm watching it now. And I'm like, I'm, wa- I, I, I watched the first six movies and now I'm like, sure. Watching this cartoon and i'm like it's not like people people swore up and down this was like the best show that ever came out and i'm like it's well then you have to watch a- daredevil because she's in that one <laughs> oh yeah you're it's a rosar learning rosario dawson's lore <laughs> and then she's yeah she was one of the main in luke cage as well she sort of transferred over to that area watching rent really quick stop from yeah rent that was another one uh clerks three <laughs> 
there was a presidential election in the United States that she was like tangentially related to. Oh yeah, she was like dating Cory Booker for a while, wasn't she? That was his name. Yeah. The man who, like, the man who looked like a clone. <laughs> yeah. He did look like a clone and it did not help that he had a brother who also looked a lot like him whose name was Carrie Booker. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's like, lazy writing. Like he was like it was like the next generation of the clone. Like they tried to clone Barack Obama and then they like they they produced two prototypes. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, so like this idea is that like the Nazis were inspired by reading in the Vedas about Vimanas, you know, ancient flying machines and Sanskrits. They decided that they were going to recreate all of these ancient technologies and did all of the things that we talked about in other episodes. But then they also mm-hmm. sent people out to go and find these artifacts mm. so that you would ne- yes. you would be able to do it. Which is what Red Skull was doing at the start of the Captain America movie. Yeah. Hitler was like, go find this Tesseract. And Red Skull was like, yes, I will do that for you. Hey, I'm going to betray. I don't even like the Nazis. I just want my own powerful stuff. (laughs) And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he was played by Hugo Weaving and Hugo Weaving is far too awesome. But okay. So like the idea is that they were trying to either communicate with aliens, but I found so many other fun claims of like supernatural shit. So here, I want to get into them. So one these do so apparently they were trying to either communicate with aliens channel pagan gods promote their world ice theory or become werewolves (laughs) okay hold on (laughs) that's fun yeah and that's like the that's the thing and so the first one that came to mind i was like what is world ice theory which i i'll get into the other ones don't worry like i am not i will not abandon werewolves werewolves are okay we have to get back to werewolves i have a million questions but yes we will circle back to werewolves but the one that did stick out was like world ice theory which is this idea that um glacial cause cosmogony and it was this idea that from this guy named hans horbiger who uh came up the idea in 1894 following a a epiphanic vision a a vision he had a vision that thought that ice was the fundamental substance for all cosmic processes and that uh celestial bodies like the moon and the milky way were composed primarily of ice uh it was not derived from any research but again from a vision he had uh but all right but because uh, as I kind of mentioned during World War II that like Nazis were kind of trying to buy into like myths and move away from like things they considered Jewish like science they were they were able to buy <laughs> right, into yeah. things that had sources like trust me bro uh, or you know a vision uh, ice yeah and so yeah I had a vision and at the center of this vision was ice ice is all around us it's everything exactly and then the, yeah the other part is that uh, the other part of the claim is that they conducted expeditions around the world to find ancient artifacts like the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant, or Mjolnir, which were thought to have powerful energies that could be used. And this is to some extent true, and I'll get into that a little bit, but that like the Nazis, particularly Heinrich Himmler and the SS, did have an interest in ancient relics in the occult, popularized, and th- but it is like mostly known because of things like Indiana Jones. Right. And that, that Himmler was especially interested in the Holy Grail because of the broader interest in spiritualism and ancient myths. I'm sure we're going to have to do a Holy Grail episode at some point, but for anybody who doesn't know like its lore, yes. the Holy Grail was... Um, it's reported to be one of like the sort of holiest of holy artifacts. And it's supposed to be like the cup that Jesus drank from at the last supper. But then it was also, it also collected his blood when he was crucified. Yeah. It's sort of in the same uh, bit of lore as the spear of destiny, which is another sort of mythical artifact that people think the That's Nazis had an interest one. in, which was the spear that was used to kill Jesus. And if you're wondering if, if you're wanting some uh, fun biblical mythology episodes, we did do one previously about the Ark of the covenant yeah you did that one is good falls in here and i led the research on that one which was very fun for me so if you want to go check that out you can do so after this and talking about the spirit destiny also makes me kind of happy that one of my favorite movies that i feel like was underappreciated is now being brought back mostly because its lead actor is having a sort of career renaissance and that is apparently there is a uh there is a sequel to to keanu reeves's constantine in the works which is great oh i love i love love that uh, that movie was that movie fucking rocked okay. and nobody i feel like it went under the radar a little bit but that movie fucking slapped 
Tilda Swinton I was an angel. It. I don't remember it, but I definitely watched it. Tilda Swinton was an angel, literally. Okay. And like played like a sort of like gender neutral, non-binary Gabriel, if I remember correctly, or Archangel Love Michael it. or something like that. I don't know. I thought the movie rocked. It unfortunately, like like with Indiana Jones, unfortunately has the mark of coming out during the peak of Shia LaBeouf when 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 they were trying to make Shia LaBeouf happen. So was it's he does, in that movie? He is in it, yeah. Um oh. but uh but I feel like Keanu Reeves is now like his post John Wick sort of bump. Yes. He could like be like, I feel like he could play like old grizzled angry, which is very much not John Constantine, but I, I right. think that it, it works specifically for like what he's doing. So I think it'll be fun. I'm excited. Yeah. I, That's I, news to me. I didn't know that. I, I, I think it'll be great. Like John, like, like, I don't know, like it seems like Keanu Reeves is a pretty, is a pretty, he enjoys acting. And uh, I feel like he would do a really good job playing like guy who's destined to go to hell. And oh, he's think. great. I, he plays character characters named John all the time. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Uh, but either ways, the idea is that they did take like the other part of the claim is that the Nazis were inspired by ancient texts and flying machines. And they did, they were inspired by ancient texts and mythologies, uh, mostly because they were trying to build this narr- narrative of Aryan supremacy and justify their racial mm. policies. And this is sort of part of the Nazi belief structure that is important is that the Nazis, because Aryan, I think like if you were to hear Aryan outside of Nazi contexts, you mostly yeah. hear it in reference to proto Indo European. And the Indo on Indo European okay. is in reference to India and India and gotcha. there is like a thing where like ancient Sanskrit and like the like European like right languages there's like a linguistic connection there where there is this sort of um, the ancient Aryan people were uh, the ancestors of Europeans but also the ancestors of Indians sure uh, and so like some and because of that like connection and uh, how ten how strong that connection is I'm not exactly sure because I'm not a uh, I'm not this isn't exactly my like area of expertise but like Right. It did mean that like one of the places that like neo Nazis and also like, you know, old school Nazis went to for like inspiration for these things was India. Mm. And now that now when you realize that like in a previous episode, when we talked about how people thought that Hitler was like the avatar of the god Vishnu, this sort of there's a little bit more right. understand the connection a little bit more. Right. There's a lot. There's that that connective tissues building for me. Here. Mm-hmm. It is so funny to me that before we started this podcast, I had never heard of the concept of Vimanas. And now it is sprinkled in through so many different conspiracy theories. It's hard. It's, it's, I don't know. It's like one of those things where like you, ne- you never hear it. And then suddenly you start paying attention and it's everywhere. All these years, I feel like I've broken your brain. I've introduced you to so many horrible things. Uh, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> We thought the show was going to be fun and 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 lighthearted, and then it's like, no, no. Well, hold on. Vibanas in their in just their essence are fun. They're yeah. just like flying machines, right? I it's mean, fun. Yeah, I, I, what's it called? Uh, as, as we have established on this show, Hindu mythology is metal as fuck, and the idea of like yeah, flying castles and shit like that is fucking awesome. Every every Hindu like story feels like it should be the cover of a power metal album. It's great. I love it. Yeah, but then like taking that those elements and then doing a uh, horror horrible atrocities with them yeah with nazi shit not great Mm -hmm. and like so the claims that nazis were searching for these ancient artifacts including some that might have been from space because you know the the whole argument like if this is sort of plugging into the greater mythology or the lore of ancient aliens where like they were looking for it because the ark of the covenant's a nuclear reactor and i don't know the holy grail is uh made of the center of a dark star i don't know i don't know i I, we haven't gotten to the holy grail episode yet so i don't know what kind of bullshit they say about that yet we don't know yet we'll find out but like that they're like alien artifacts with like actual power that people are looking for Mm. but the historical basis probably traces back to a group called the Anherba, which is a a organization that Heinrich Himmler founded that I'll get more into later on but it was basically an archaeological thing it was called it basically stood as the Ancestral Heritage Research and Teaching Society which was a think tank that got a lot of funding especially from Heinrich Himmler but also like other private people that was trying to prove the superiority of the Aryan race by using archaeology Mm. And it did a lot of expeditions in many countries, including Iceland, searching for evidence that supported Nazi ideology. And they did a lot of these things, including excavating places like Exerstein, which is okay. this like site in Germany with the goal of finding evidence that there were like ancient sacred ritualistic practices by ancient Germanic people to build this like idea of this German entity that was. And Exerstein, as I found out about it, is this like sandstone rock formation in the Tutorburg forest near the to- oh. town of uh 
Hornbad Meinborg in the Leipa district of Germany. Yeah, sorry, yeah. don't at me, Germans. But as I got <laughs> into it, it's like this whole thing, the Exen ex, ex, Externstein, is like yeah. its whole own thing, where it's like this ancient site that has also become like a lightning rod for like far right activists. And I'm like, oh, oh no. this has to be its own episode at some point because this is insane. Um, like I, I, it was one of those things where like I was like, oh, I should like research a little bit more on this for this episode, and then I poked into it and I was like, oh, okay, too much, too much, too much, too much, too much stuff. <laughs> Gosh, that is sometimes that is a thing you and I have in common. I'm just like, huh, what's this? What's this random thing? Oh, no, I tripped and fell and I learned way too much. Yeah. And I'm like trying really hard to keep these episodes under control because we've been balloon- yeah. they've been ballooning out of control. So I appreciate you. That one. Uh, that one is like, OK, we'll have to get into that at some point. Mm-hmm. So then I'm looking into like, who are the people who are really promoting this like belief system? And the biggest one that I could think of was the f- handful of like prominent Nazis in in the German like thing in the whole German mm-hmm. system that were into promoting the like who who really were into like using archaeology or get involved with archaeology and the two that come to mind are Heinrich Himmler and Julius Ringel so Julius Ringel was just a who gets associated with being somebody who like found these artifacts or was searching for these artifacts and then I did research into him and what it turned out is that Julius Ringel was just a German uh, major general who looted tons of artifacts from Greece during the invasion of Greece in 1941 and okay. did a bunch of illegal excavations on the island of Crete and confiscated art, uh, antiques from various sites. So what I'm guessing is that Julius Ringel wasn't so much like this person trying to find ancient artifacts as much as he was a, a guy who did a bunch of looting of ancient artifacts because he knew yeah. they were valuable. And they were get, he was going to sell them. Yeah. yeah. I could get on Antiques Roadshow with this. Yeah. Whatever like the, the version of that is. But yeah, like so. And if you think about it, if you're like the general who's in charge of conquering Greece and you want to take mm-hmm. Back mm-hmm. loot. What are you going to loot in Greece but like ancient Greek artifacts, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heinrich Himmler, another person that we've talked about a whole lot on this show because a he bunch. is basically like the the Nazi official that is the most associated with like the occult and the archaeology and stuff like that. He was the head of the SS. So like huge, extremely important person, like like Hitler's right hand yes. man, basically. Mm-hmm. It's funny because there is like when Hitler committed suicide in 1945, there was this brief period where they were trying to figure out who was going to succeed him because they just needed Germany to have a leader who's just was essentially to surrender to the allies mm, right <laughs> and uh it didn't end up being heinrich himmler although he would have been an uh, obvious one if it had been under better circumstances but end up being this guy named dunitz dunitz yeah and i think that's his name but he basically was like the second fuhrer of germany and was only it for like a day because his job ah. was to call the allies and say we surrender <laughs> that's all i had to do i had one job and i did it yeah exactly that's me dunitz I done it. I done it. Done it. Done it. Yeah. That's what I did. I did it and I done it. There's a uh, Mitchell and Webb skit about him because it's like, can I just get one Heil (laughs) Dunnitz? But yeah, uh, Heinrich Himmler was uh, the head of the SS, born in 1900 in Munich to a conservative middle class Roman Catholic family, joined the Nazi party in 1923, SS in 1925, and became the Reichsfuhrer SS, which means like the leader of the SS by 1929, and expanded the SS Mm. into a paramilitary group. So basically like the Nazi party's own military wing, Mm. which, you know, in some countries, in some places, political parties have have paramilitaries associated with them. It's not a sign that things are going great in that country. Um, (laughs) Okay. But it's not unheard of in various places. Places. Gotcha. And he was one of the most powerful people in Nazi Germany. He's considered the main architect of the Holocaust. Mm. Like he's the person who like generated the system that created the sort of state terror and extermination camps as part of that process. Mm-hmm. He also, though, had a very deep interest in the past. He was influenced a lot by the ideas by a guy named Hans F.K. Gunther, uh, who was this okay. Nordicist, which is like a term for people who study like Nordic people. Okay. And he believed that he could, in studying ancient Germanic people, find a blueprint for the Germanic people's future. Uh, Hans Gunther mm. was like kind of a little bit older, born in Freiburg. Uh, he was also a writer and a eugenicist. And Uh-oh. what I found is a description, advocate for scientific racism. Oh, no. <laughs> Which is essentially um, the idea of using scientific language to justify racist beliefs. It's uh, got a long history in history. 
history. Yeah. Oh, that's that's no good. Yeah. But he had all these theories that were based on this idea that the European population had been divided. It was actually made up of several races and that the Nordic race was the most valuable and creative force in history. And okay. it's interesting that he says it specifically in that way, because I have heard neo-Nazis who refer to just Westerners or Europeans as like the most creative force in history. And I'm like, ah, I see. I can I can see the people that you are cribbing like oh. you're reading to uh, to get this idea. It's interesting yeah. how you out yourself like that. Interesting. Yeah. They were all involved in Nazi archaeology, which is the sort of blanket term for this attempt to find evidence of Aryan ancestry and support the Nazi ultra nationalist uh, like, you know, agenda. Sure. Himmler had an interest in mysticism and the occult and had this weird fucked up racial ideology, which led to this uh, distortion of archaeological evidence. Like basically like a lot of the stuff that mm. was done under the Antarba were like straight up fabricated or like extremely misinterpreted in order to like the idea is they had the conclusion they wanted and they were trying to find reasons right. to justify it, which result. But because yeah. their conclusion was wrong, they then had to like make up a lot of shit in order to fill it in. Yes, this is some. Thing, this is sort of a through line of these episodes about ancient aliens and Nazis is they have a conclusion that they go way out of their way to try desperately to prove is true, but they start from the conclusion that they want to believe. And then because it's not true. Yeah. They have to just, they have to do a whole bunch of weird stuff, including lying effectively. It's almost like trying to start a program where you're making the case that aliens visited earth in humanity's past and that all non-white people's like great accomplishments can be tied to that. And then you go Mm. out of your way, including lying and making up shit to stretch way out of proportion all of these things from the past in order to make your claim. Um, the only difference is that yeah. this one got a TV show made out of it. <laughs> yep. Oof. It's not that they're the same thing, but these things, these ri- they rhyme in a certain way. <laughs> they rhyme. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you found that? Have you have you discovered that as you're watching of Star Wars Clone Wars? Does the Clone Wars rhyme with any other Star Wars thing yet? <laughs> what I'm finding about Clone Wars is that I don't know how involved George Lucas was with it, but like the prequel movies for how they feel like they were written by ChatGPT or at least the dialogue was. Yeah. The thing has like very clear like like you watch like Attack of the Clones and it's like that they're building this clone army and then the Republic buys into it. It's very clearly expressed in the movie like this is fucked up right like this is not good what's happening a hundred percent and then we get to clone wars and it's like are we going to critically examine this nope we're just going to talk about how cool clone troopers are and give them all little nicknames and we're just not going to investigate interrogate this at all and then also it's like and there's this war where tons of people are dying but also there's this like 14 year old girl who's just here now like this ahsoka character and i'm like um why not should this child be in this war like child soldiers are are not good right (laughs) i don't know like to me i'm like it's 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 very yeah. much like um how everybody missed the point of Starship Troopers, where like the whole right. point of Starship Troopers is supposed to be you're watching this and thinking about how fucked up that society is, but then everybody's interpretation, especially in America, was like cool action movie. Yeah, I also want to join the military and kill bugs. It doesn't matter that like the officers had their uh their uniforms literally inspired by the Nazis because. So Paul Verhoeven, who experienced the Nazi occupation of of the Netherlands, like explicitly yeah. wrote it as like an anti-fascist thing, especially to piss off the author of Starship Troopers, who was a little bit of a fascist himself. And so uh, 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 Robert Heinlein is that person. Mm. Well, the good news is Star Wars is not analogous to any real life wars in any capacity. Yeah, I just I, the Clone Wars it's seems pure to be fiction. My, my, I know that people are saying that it changes and that gets better later, but man, it feels like it's completely missing what little point George Lucas had in the prequels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, that's that's a different thing. I was planning at one point making a podcast with Mia Mulder where because Mia Mulder is like a fierce prequels defender where I was going yeah. to watch through Star Wars and she was going to defend it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, but yeah, towards but uh, the best story about Himmler, there's one there's one happy bit about Heinrich Himmler. My favorite story about him, which is that near the okay. end of the war, sure. Himmler tried to negotiate with the allies to uh, get out so that he wouldn't have to face consequences. Mm. And so Hitler 
stripped him of all of his titles and offices. <laughs> and, okay. uh, and so Himmler, like basically like by trying to negotiate with the allies just got completely like he got owned. That's why it was done. It's and not him. And then mm. uh, he had to go into hiding where he was then captured by the British and committed suicide on May 23rd, 1945. All right. And so um, I feel like that very igno- uh, ignominious end is um, is perfect. He's given me maybe it's just because of the show that I just finished watching. He's giving me General Zhao vibes. <laughs> Wait, the cartoon or the did you watch the cartoon or did you watch the live action? I watched the live action one. I liked it. I liked okay. it. Okay, it's good. I haven't seen. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen yeah. it. I have no opinions. I have no opinions. I just. I just mean we can't. We're already at forty minutes. We can't go down Avatar. Yeah, the internet's defending or the internet seems to be against it, but I. I like it. I think it's good. But yeah, like another person that's important to know is that Otto Wilhelm Rahn was this German archaeologist and treasure hunter that Himmler hired to find the Holy Grail. So like that is a true thing that happened. Okay. Otto Rahn was this uh, medievalist and ariosophist and okay. a uh, an SS officer who looked for the Holy Grail and uh, and tried to like, you know, deal with that. He was interested in ancient history. He also studied chivalry and the occult and ariosophy, which was the key to uh, Nazi ideas ideology let me just tell you if i can find the ariosophy i'm like i love when people make a new word for dumb shit i know i was i was like right clicking on it being like look up define please help me yeah it's like this gnostic like it's basically like this mix of like gnostic esoteric shit but also nazism gotcha uh it's like you know the study of arians oh i see uh or like the philosophy of arians or whatever sure ariosophy i get it's a portmanteau i get it according to this though there is an interesting story about him which is that he did make a lot of contributions to a lot of the pseudo archaeology of Nazism, but he was uh, he had he struggled with the regime because he was also known to be gay and being gay was literally a death sentence under the Nazi mm. regime. And so he right. had a lot of personal difficulties in the SS due to this. And but despite that, he went to various sacred sites across Europe and his expeditions were funded by the SS in his search for the Holy Grail. And also he had uh, some more liberal political views that were at odds with like the rampant authoritarianism of the Nazis. So his personal life mm. began to fall apart because he was just living in such a deep state of cognitive dissonance. But then like he was assigned guard duty at the Dachau concentration camp and it completely fucked him up as mm. it would because, you know, if you're a human being and you have to do that kind of thing, Right. Yeah. So this mm-hmm. fled to him resigning from the SS and then he fled to the Austrian Alps where he was later found dead by an event that's been ruled a suicide, but is currently surrounded with speculation and mystery. Mm. So this is another person that's part of the sort of part, but he is, um, he has become a figure that inspired things like, like he was actually cited as the inspiration for the fictional character, Indiana Jones. Like this is the act. This is the real life Indiana Jones. This is the real. Oh no. Don't tell David Childress this. Yeah. Yeah. He was at least he was cited oh, as the inspiration so as one of the inspirations for Indiana Jones. Oh, he's gonna be so sad yeah. when he finds this out. Luckily, this is a children's free podcast, so he's not gonna hear it. He's not allowed, actually. Yeah. And Adolf Hitler was of course associated with this, but the thing is it's important, and this is the sort of part where I start debunking things, is that he didn't actually Ooh. believe in the pseudo-archaeology. Like he didn't think that it was true or anything like that. But what he did see, and what I think even Himmler kind of came to the conclusion of, like, this isn't actually true. True. This isn't a thing that we're going into, but it's a useful bit of propaganda that we can use to uh, justify their territorial aims of like conquering Ukraine and killing all the people in it so that we can, you know, use it as farmland. Yeah. Like, I'm loving what you're putting down. I do definitely want to debunk these claims, especially the werewolf thing. Do you think we could take a quick break for product service? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, sorry. I took the Vivance one hour before we started, and it is like hitting its peak right now. And you can feel me. <laughs> I like the also engines revving took up. Vivance. I also did like not even an hour before, like fifteen minutes before we started recording. Yeah, so this is like high energy podcast right now. High energy ADHD podcast. It's actually very, very telling sorry, for everybody. a Nazi related podcast that we're both high on like amphetamines for this podcast because <laughs> uh, there was a lot of that in the Nazi regime as well. All right. We got to start debunking claims. We've learned a lot, but you led with things like werewolves. Yeah. And I got to know more. 
So continue, sir. Okay. So yeah, Nazi archaeology wasn't actually a project that tried to do anything real. It was an attempt to create propaganda. Uh, it was like, gotcha. the, the the point wasn't to actually find an answer, but they thought that it was a powerful way to change the national narrative because the concept of niche nationalities is that you are a specific group of people who are rooted in a very specific place and ancestry. Yep. A thing that has never been true of anybody because people have been moving and interbreeding and people and move the, the, the yeah. concept of like the nation, like that there is a distinct group of people that are tied to a very specific place is a misunderstanding of humanity and humans have always been migrating, diasporing or interbreeding breeding forever and it's also the planet slowly moves the co- the cr- the earth's crust moves even the place is the places change even yeah there, there's like there's like land that when humans first evolved that don't doesn't exist anymore because the ocean levels rose yeah but the idea that like but like because you know nationalism then has to do the project of nation building where you have to establish a history that then makes you say well yeah we've always been here and that's why it's okay for us to say that we own this territory of land and that other people in it aren't welcome. That is sort of the whole project of nationalism and nation states. And this was the project by the Nazis to create this identity so that they could justify this extremely nationalist ideology, specifically because they had this concept that they wanted to, like the Mm. whole war was about them wanting to conquer Ukraine and wanting to kill everybody there in order to send German settlers, again, directly inspired, not not even like indirectly, but like Hitler wrote saying his direct yeah. inspiration was the American In conquest of the West. Oh boy. Uh, and like the way that America treated the way that America treated its black population and the way that it treated native Americans were like direct inspirations for Hitler's motivations for what to do in Europe. And <sighs> In order to justify that mission, he needed to build a concept of Germany, but Germany was such a young country that a German identity was like weak at best. And so sure, this like project was an attempt to make that identity whole cloth. And in some ways, all national identities are invented, manufactured things because sure. again, humans have been moving and intermingling and, 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 and traveling the world for as long as we've existed. And that is just kind of part of how humans work. Right. And I think there is something inherent and we've even touched on this in the, in the past when we've talked about more biblical based ancient aliens theories, but there is something, you know, for better, for worse, there is something very strong about a story Mm -hmm. of, of where you came from and, and, and how you and your family and, and the people around you got to be where you are, you know, again, for better, for worse, there's very, something very, very strong yes. in a story like that. I actually am talking about this in my next video because that's kind of the part where fascism is so effective in mass mm. media because, you know, if you really want to understand how the world works, you need to, like, if you want to understand the world, where the world is a fantastically complicated place where a bunch of random shit happens, but a bunch of people with differing ideas and agendas bounce off of each other and move around in ways that are hard to even comprehend, let alone like understand or put into something that you can put out as like a, a, a post on the internet or as a radio broadcast. And you have to understand like four different memes to get a new meme, like a meme about a meme. And it's just like, it's, it's, everything's way too complicated. Yeah. And if you really want to understand like the forces that move humanity and shape history, you need to read this one book that is 3000 words or 3000 pages long split into three different volumes and uh, has literal Mm. math homework in it. If you're a fascist, though, Mm. and and I would argue, and this is why I always say that conspiracy theories and fascism are always you're not going to find one without the other eventually, because they're all about taking the complexities of the world we live in and humanity and reducing it to a Mm -hmm. simple story that usually blames a small group of people for the world's problems that is Mm. at its core what's going on and this was part of that project now werewolves (laughs) please i as soon as you mentioned werewolves in relation to nazi stuff my very first thought was wolfenstein i've not played any wolfenstein stuff but is there is it grounded in some sort of reality no wolfenstein is uh like the original wolfenstein was a doom clone that okay that was more like the doom was also based in reality so continue yeah, yes yeah uh, the demons on mars on um, mars yeah it was actually they got it wrong it was actually damon's on mars it was matt damon on mars matt they got that one wrong man that, does someone need to make a doom mod where it's just like you fighting hordes it's of matt damon's matt damon. <laughs> 
There is one where they uh, they replaced all of the pictures with pictures of uh, Tim Allen and all of the sounds with him going. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's amazing, incredible. All right, but uh, but yeah, Wolfenstein. What is that? It's like this thing where like uh, it's a first person shooter where you're fighting Nazis and like they have all sorts of high technology and stuff that wasn't available before, kind of playing into this thing. But then they kind of rebooted sure. it in recent years where they made like an alternate history where the Nazis won World War II and have a lot of high technology. I haven't <laughs> played those, but I've been told they're very good. But uh, but I have played the Wolfenstein like 1990s uh, shooter where okay. the end boss yeah. is Robo Hitler. So. <laughs> <laughs> incredible yeah it, it, i mean it's silly but it kind of leans into that it's but are there wolves there in wolfenstein there are, there are I, not, there, I don't part? think there are werewolves i don't remember there being werewolves weird but also it's okay, been like 30 years since then. i played it so there is that so and i never played it. yeah i just assumed wolfenstein sounded like well i mean it sounds like werewolf frankenstein but i know that there are i know that there are nazi things in wolfenstein so mm-hmm. i just assumed nazi werewolves but i guess not i maybe uh-huh. they're maybe they are i just like it's been a long time since i played it so my memory is a little vague but um the thing is that you might not be surprised because of the name of it that werewolves are a german myth um that they come from Mm. german mythology uh you might notice this because it shows up in the witcher because the witcher is sort of based on like central european germanic Ah. mythology or slavic mythology too because it's based on another game i've not played but poland is right next to germany so it's all intermingled but um but yeah werewolves are part of german mythology and uh i'm like i'm I'm, at first i was like what but then i remember there's a lot of pop culture associations with like Nazis becoming werewolves. Like that is, there is like a little bit of that in there. There is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it all comes from this, which was that there was this movement called the werewolf movement. It was attempted to create like a behind the allied lines, like behind enemy lines, Nazi party loyalists and trying to organize them into paramilitary units and do guerrilla warfare against the allies. That was, Mm. and they called it the werewolf movement because you'd be like, you know, normal people who would then uh, transition into these like deadly warriors that would uh, fuck with the allies. Tristan, I just Googled like Nazi werewolves because I was like, surely there's a movie or a game or a TV show or a comic book or something that I'm thinking of. But what I got instead and good job, maybe good job, Google was exactly the thing you're talking about right now of like the the guerrilla warfare. Yeah, of the guerrilla warfare of the Nazi werewolf stuff, which is very interesting. I genuinely was expecting to see fictional things pop up. Yeah. It had and it's an evocative name. Like I think that like creating a paramilitary force called the werewolves, it's very like symbolic of like mm-hmm. what what paramilitary and guerrilla warfare is supposed to do, but the movement didn't really have much impact because it it killed them. It had caused some casualties and damage, but it didn't really alter the course of the war mostly because Nazi ideas are not exactly all that popular when you see them for what they really are much world war ii it had started to happen so there is that Mm. yeah and like again historians have argued that like this is part of their overall project to create this pseudo narrative and okay other ideas they had like you know the cosmic ice theory never really got any support from the scientific community so it never really actually worked again it just worked as like they were trying to do it to build a uh, mythology that like other scientific theories which were labeled as Jewish so that this was going to be like their German version of science but again it failed and and like again like the propaganda like like scientists never could never bite on it so it never really got anywhere they couldn't bite on the ice no oh man uh it was popular with like the Nazi elite because it was useful for their idea of like racial spirit of the time and science and stuff but no scientist ever took it seriously enough so mm. it, it failed as a propaganda thing yeah that theory you might say grew pretty cold yeah <laughs> okay i'll take it i'll eat it um all right thank cold you cold as ice yep. but yeah the other thing too is that during world war ii the nazis like other like you know technological powers at the time were trying to develop uh vtol aircraft so they mm-hmm. and, and, and you know would eventually result in like the helicopter but it did result in some prototypes that never worked that looked kind of like ufos and that was sort of the basis behind like oh they were right. into famanas and all that kind of stuff yeah and we've talked about that in a previous episode yeah too. so despite it really just being an attempt to create a fake story and propaganda and not really being based on anything real it got really popular in things like indiana jones but also uncharted and i guess uncharted is like oh. indiana jones for modern day audiences i've never played an uncharted but i've been told that it's 
basically Indiana Jones. It's like Indiana Jones. It's like, um, what if you, Indiana Jones killed a lot of endangered species? Like that's the main thing I could think of. Yeah. See, like in my head, I always, I, I've, I've only, I've not played many of the uncharted, but I was just like, is this basically just like Tomb Raider, but a guy? If Tomb Raider too. Yeah. I guess you could put that in there as well. Um, yeah, I always think of Tomb Raider as being a little bit like old school, but I, I, I know it's been rebooted now. So I know that it's kind of modern. Yeah. Nothing ever dies. Uh, Adrian, nothing ever ends. Nothing ever dies. Nothing ever ends. Every time I see a new thing getting rebooted, I'm like, nothing ever ends. Adrian in the end, not even Watchmen, <laughs> not even Watchmen, even though that HBO show kind of slapped. Okay. So like, here's the thing though, is that these ideas, Tell me. these ideas were trying to emphasize that there was this racial purity and superiority of some kind of Aryan race that doesn't really exist. The, the, the idea is that Europe has a long history of having a lot of cultural diversity and interaction with various ethnic groups in, in the continent, but also abroad. The long history mm-hmm. of humanity is that we are constantly meeting, befriending, fucking, and trading with everything that every human and sometimes non-humans that we can find. That mm-hmm. is the history of humanity. We are horny, hungry people that want to go around, have sex, Yep. Trade stuff and in general, just vibe and be friends. <laughs> We've talked about this with our episode with the uh, Trace about the sexy ape theme. Yeah. That is humans. It's true. We're just hot. We're just hot and horny. Yeah. Singles in your area. <laughs> And also this was, it also uh, tried to downplay that there have been significant contributions to European civilizations that were not Aryan, like Romans and Greeks who are huge, uh, who have had huge um, influence over European culture. Mm. Rome is like literally the basis of the cat of Catholicism, the most popular religion in Europe. Um, Greek philosophy and like sort of uh, Hellenic thought is a huge mm-hmm. thing in both the in both Christian and Muslim like philosophy and thought. I'd argue that sure. like Muslims uh, ingested a lot more of the Hellenistic stuff, but uh, in like sort of Orthodox Christian circles, Greek philosophy mm-hmm. still has quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of influence. Yeah. And also the other part, too, is talking about other Near Eastern civilizations. Like we don't talk about how much Spanish has Arab borrow words and how much the Middle East played a large role in the cultural heritage of Europe. Turns out out people in the Middle East and people in Europe have been again running into each other, fucking trading for as long yeah. as these as people have lived on those lands, and they, they're deeply intertwined and and contributing to each other to this very day. And the idea yeah. that the Nazis tried to promote was that all of this was the uh, was the result of this one very specific you know group of people that it's even kind of questionable whether they even existed, and so mm. and, and so it like overwrites a lot of really important things, and also right. it glorified the these early Germanic societies that they called the uh, being very, you know, advanced and culturally superior, but showed that these societies were basically on par with or even less advanced than many other contemporaneous civilizations in Europe and the Mediterranean, let alone mm-hmm. China, <laughs> which China, I feel like, was ahead of the game for a very, very long time when it came to like yeah. advancement in culture and technology, probably until like in like the last three or four hundred years uh, when like, you know, colonization yeah. basically changed the balance of power on earth like i would probably say that Mm -hmm. like right before columbus china would probably be like the center china and the middle east were probably like the centers of like civilization and advancement and culture and technology and stuff Mm -hmm. because it turns out when you can just take a bunch of stuff from other people's countries it uh it makes you it's a really great way to become a lot more powerful in a very short amount of time Mm -hmm. it also very much obviously tried to suppress jewish contribution to both german and european history what that doesn't sound like the nazis yeah for real But like the thing is, like it promoted anti-Semitic propaganda, as we know, but like it downplayed the fact that Jews have been living in Europe for over a thousand years, if not longer, Mm -hmm. and that Jews had have made various like contributions to European culture and European identity and, you know, philosophy and everything. Sure. In both the Middle East and in Europe. And like that part kind of gets downplayed now, uh, especially because there's a lot of places in Europe that had large Jewish populations that because of the Nazi regime now don't. And Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we remember that like European identity, like I think that it's important that we acknowledge that like Jews had a massive uh, impact on European culture and, and, and identity. And I think that it's uh, to, to otherize them is, 
right. more than a little anti-Semitic. But it yeah, has a th- for sure. And the other thing too is that the Nazis tried to co-opt and reinterpret a lot of Christian symbols and traditions to fit their idea, their idea that had a lot of paganism in, mixed with it. But it, it also mm. is like trying to downplay the role that Christianity had in Europe, which is also kind of hard to overstate. I feel like that's a weird. Mm-hmm. It was weird that the Nazis even tried, but that's one of those things. And at the end of the day, what it's doing is distracting from history, glamorizing the Nazi regime yet again by trying oh, to wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Tristan, oh, you can't just jump stinger. into the you cannot just jump into the part where Tristan makes you sad because we've got a stinger now. All right, I gotta make you sad now. We haven't had time for people to vote on it because we recorded a lot in advance, but I will just play this one. This is the part where Tristan makes you sad. Oh, that is sad. All right. So what is what's wrong with this then, Tristan? So even like mentioning these ideas about the Nazis hunting for ancient artifacts and like having this sort of like thing, I think in in its own way is still trying to glamorize the Nazi regime and try to make it a um, lot more impressive and interesting than it actually was. Mm. I think that by doing that, we are even if we're not like, you know, uh, uh, showing them off as being heroes or whatever, it is still portraying them as like adventurers or the seekers of lost knowledge rather than focusing on the main thing that they did, which was uh, crimes against humanity. Right. And that it moves away from the stories of systematic genocide, war crimes and atrocities into something that's more like uh, an adventure serial. And I do think that by like when we like make Nazis like the villains in like an upbeat story like Indiana Jones, we are in some ways sanding off the edges of like, yes, basically like the most horrific regime that has ever existed in human history. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, it also tries to legitimize the archaeological pursuits that they were doing because it implies that they were looking for real things instead of what they were actually doing, which was intentionally building a fake narrative. They were they were Mm. obviously lying for propaganda purposes. And that part, it it almost tries to justify and and keep in mind that that pseudo archaeology was used to try and justify their expansionism, their racism and their extermination of entire peoples. Uh, And by doing this, you're giving more fuel to a propagandistic fire that should be dead and we should work very hard to make sure stays dead. Yeah. And also, and also just as I mentioned, all those things really downplay the importance of like the real history that we know about humanity, which is that we are just a, 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 a group of people that move and mix like crazy. And that is our, I would argue that in our sort of world where we see things through national lenses still, this is still a predominant concept of the world that Mm -hmm. I think we need to break because even like our concept of borders and stuff like that stems from this idea. I think it's important to note that humans have always been a melange. We have always been mixing. We have always been uh, like our strength as a species. The reason why we exist and the reason why we might exist in a hundred years is because we have have been a cooperative species. There's this whole theory called homo puppy, uh, which uh, oh. is this whole idea that if you look at like the signs of what happens to animals when they become domesticated, the, the original study goes back to Russia. Have you heard of the Russian fox study? Um, maybe. There's a board game being made about it apparently right now. Oh. But during this, in the Soviet Union, there was this evolutionary researcher uh, who sent his assistant and she went off to Siberia to study this fox farm. Mm-hmm. And this person was just like breeding foxes and foxes were like this notoriously like wild animal like you can't tame them right and so she was given one instruction every day go meet some of the foxes and when they are like the ones that show the least amount of aggression no other traits just least amount of aggression breed them Mm. and when they bred those foxes they found interesting things happened their brains shrunk a little bit okay but the main things that happened is their ears started to get a little flopped at the end they started getting Mm. spots on their body and And they started to develop like more childlike features, including bigger and more expressive eyes and things like that. And when people look at like what makes humans different from our other hominid ancestors like Neanderthals, a lot Mm -hmm. of those traits look like the things that happened to these foxes, but has also happened to differentiate a lot of domesticated animals from their wild cousins. Mm. And so what they think is that the 
the the actual secret success to humanity is that we became less we we are the least aggressive and the most cooperative and that we were like we became we 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 retained childhood features we got bigger and more expressive faces to communicate our emotions better All right and we became more trusting and kind and uh, cooperative and that was the key to our success as a species and I would argue that that is like like when we build like these concepts of nations and borders and 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 states uh, I'm an, I'm an anarchist by the way I don't know if I ever said that on this podcast but uh, when we build mm-hmm. these kind of concepts where we draw lines in the ground and say like nobody can come over here it's very antithetical to exactly that yeah to yeah. what make made us succeed as people and so mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day the Nazi regime was like the the extremes of everything that is sort of the core of the sickness of the of the world we live in today. And that's why I feel myself drawn to study them and look at them over and over again, because I think that it's important to note how not far away we are from the exact same things that caused that, um, that like bloodbath that happened. And maybe we should investigate other ways of organizing humanity. Yeah. That was less of a Tristan makes you sad and more like Tristan. Try- this is, this is like, uh, I think I mentioned before we started recording that I was making a video and this is the core of that video. This is, this is Tristan pumps you up. This is, this is how that one goes. <laughs> <laughs> hug go hug somebody yeah Woo! but yeah that's like the whole thing about the nazis and like this like you know nazi archaeology and the search for for things in world war ii mm-hmm. i guess like i i feel like i've i'm, I'm re- revisiting a lot of points but i think it's important to emphasize so absolutely that's part of it uh next week i think we're talking about uh, we're actually talking about the swastika, so that will be a little bit more <sighs> different and interesting. All right. Yeah, we're taking a small break from Nazi stuff to talk about the swastika next week. But, you know, if you want to find out more when that comes up, that's not going to be a right-click save as, I don't think, I'm posting on Nope. It. Nope. But if you do want to, uh, when we do have more visual elements, where should they go to? Oh, that's a great question. If you want to follow us online, you can go to at probs, not aliens on Twitter or blue sky, uh, blue skies open for everyone. Come join us over there. We've got a lot. People are joining. It's good times. We love it. Blue sky is also childress free as far as I know. <laughs> so <laughs> let's keep it that way. Tristan and I both do other things outside of this podcast. Tristan, what do you do? You keep teasing a video that you're working on. What's that about? Uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel called Step Back, uh, where I talk about ideas from the past and how like we need to investigate those things to understand the way the world works. And my next video is about the kind of like core of like how fascists recruit and how they uh, prey on our our mental shortcuts. And then my next video after that is sort of my last video as a full time content creator where I'm going to reflect on human nature and hopefully kind of end this sort of period of the channel with uh with with something a little mm-hmm. more hopeful scott if i wanted to see what i think is the horniest thumbnail i've ever seen about the comics code authority oh. comic book censorship history of the comics code authority nice. which involves a big censored bar over the breasts of spider-man uh it's mary jane but she is also clothed under the censor bar <laughs> that is so just a very I, that's something i'm like that is a very horny thumbnail so uh correct amundo um that's the video i did i don't know if it particularly holds up but uh yeah go check it out on my youtube channel nerd sync it's an old video according Tristan to according gag. to vid iq it is performing 4.2 times higher than your base viewership so yeah, yeah i just don't know if the things i said in it hold up is okay, what i fair, mostly fair, fair. mean but i that's my youtube channel nerd sync n-e-r-d-s-y-n-c i, I all right look Here's the thing. I was teasing that I'm working on a video about the weird world of licensed cookbooks. And then I was like, well, that got too out of control. So I'm instead doing a video about the time Scooby-Doo met the Harlem Globetrotters. And somehow that spiraled even more out of control to the point where I have to do a third video just to have something quick, just to have something quick. And now I'm making a video about a very silly Scooby-Doo video game speed run that as of right now of this recording, I have not done, but I plan to tie for first place. Um, So look forward to that on my YouTube channel. I don't know what it's about. Also, I just want to say Tristan makes great videos. I'm sad that he's that you're no longer going to be a full time YouTuber. I hope we can at some point in the future grow this podcast so that it supports both of us, especially you, uh, because I would love to not only continue doing this podcast, but also see you make more videos. We don't do a lot of call to actions of people to support us, but you have a Patreon 
for your videos. Are you shutting that down or do no, you, I'm going to keep it going. Up? I'm going to, I'm not like, I'm not stopping making videos is the thing. I'm going to keep right. making stuff. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, people will, if they feel it's still worth it, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep riding along and I'll keep making it. But it's, um, it's, it's just moving to side hustle status is, is the main thing. I get you. Well, we don't have a Patreon for this podcast, but if you like all the things that Tristan does and Scott on this show, Scott does great stuff too. but if you like, if you like all the stuff that Tristan does on this show <laughs> and you want to support Tristan, he has a Patreon for step back his YouTube channel. Oh, go check guys. it out. Tristan didn't, Tristan did not want me to do this, but I think he's great and he makes great stuff. And if you like what he does and you have the means to, to support him, I would, I say, I say, go for it. Hearts. So there Thank you go. You. Yeah. But if you want to support the show overall, you can go to nebula.tv slash probably not aliens. We're going to have a lot of calls to action. Yeah, that last yeah. one was the more most important one. Nebula.tv slash probably not aliens. You can get episodes of the show early. We're finally back on that on that timeline because mm-hmm. I've edited all of them way in advance. So and it helps support the show when you when you do that. Uh, you can also leave reviews on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to everyone who does that or tell your friends about the show for free. Mm -hmm. And a very simple website to send people is probsnotaliens.com. It has links to every, everywhere you can listen to the show. Another great website is patreon.com slash step back. No, I it's imagine that's what it is. Com. It's step back history. Okay. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can, but props on aliens.com where you can get everything that you need to find the show on whatever way that you like to shove a uh, podcast into your ears. So see, I own that, that URL. Watch me reroute it oh. to patreon.com. <laughs> Oh, boy. Anyway, thank you so much to everyone who supports us in any way, shape, or form. Until next time, my name is Scott Nice One. I'm Tristan Johnson. The truth is out there. Holy Grail slip. Oh, she's drinking right from the Holy Grail. Probably. That was a holier one than normal, I feel. Yeah, that was my holiest one. The the O in probably was extra hole filled. Probably. <laughs> <laughs>